this table. I'm going to ask some questions about this table. And um, my first question, if you guys can see my table, my first question, so let's read it. Five males with an X-linked genetic disorder have one child each. The random variable X is the number of children among the five who inherit the X-linked genetic disorder. So you want to know what the random variable represents for your situation. In this case, right, the random variable represents the number of children out of the five who inherit this gene. So my possible outcomes, what does this mean? So I can have zero children out of the five that have this genetic disorder. I can have one child out of this five that have this genetic disorder. And again, order matters. It could be the first child, the second child, the fifth child, whatever. Exactly two of the children have that genetic disorder. Exactly three of the children have the, you know, and so on and so forth, right? Well, I want to determine if this is a probability dis distribution or not. Let's start there. Is this a probability distribution or is it not? Um, does it represent the actual scenario and all the possible outcomes? So what do I have to check? First, I want to check and make sure all my probabilities are between 0 and 1. Well, that's easy. That's given. It looks like it. Um, my second uh, question. What is the sum of the probability column? So if I add up my probability column, 0 0.031 plus 0 0.156. Let me see what you guys get if you want to go ahead of me. 0 0.313 plus 0 0.313 plus 0 0.156 plus 0 0.031. What do I get? I got 1. So the sum of the probability column is actually equal to 1. That's what this notation represents. Now, if it was not equal to 1, then I can say, well, this is not a probability distribution. Either I don't have all the possible outcomes or the probabilities are calculated incorrectly. So, so far, so good. I got a probability distribution. Awesome. Now, let me ask some questions about that probability distribution. What is the probability? Let me just because I don't really want to. What is the probability that I randomly select um, from this group of five exactly two children that have this genetic disorder? What is the probability that I randomly select exactly two of the children out of the five that have this genetic disorder? Well, how do I do that? Look at my table. What is the probability that exactly two of the five children have this genetic disorder? Well, here's two, and the probability of that two is equal to point. 313. So my answer is 0.313 or 31.3%. I have no calculation that is required. Not a big deal. The nice thing about the probability distribution is that everything is basically there for me. Everything is calculated for me. What is the probability that I randomly select and get um, exactly 5? children that have this genetic disorder? Well, what's the answer to that one? Mm -hmm. 0.031. Here's exactly five. The probability of this case is this, boom, 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 0.031, or 3.1%. Uh, would, um, would you say, let's say 3.1%, would you say that that is likely or unlikely? Is that unlikely or is it likely to occur? I would say unlikely. Why would I say unlikely? Well, the probability is less than 5%, right? When the probability is less than 5%, then we typically say it's unlikely, okay? 
Um, what is the probability that I randomly select uh, from this group of five and I get um, more than three children with this disorder? What the heck does that mean? More than three. Is that including three, by the way? More than three would be not including three. Right? More than three. So that would be four or five. Right? Anytime I see the or case, addition. So I'm going to add 0.156 plus 0 0.031, the probability of four and the probability of five. Point, what is it? What is it? 0 0.156 plus 0 0.031. 0 0.156 plus 0 0.031 equals 0 0.187, which is equal to 0 0.187 or 18.7%. Okay, does that make sense? Let me see if this sounds familiar. If I randomly select, now this is, I'm going to take this further, but this is something we talked about before. So let me see if you recognize it. If I can get this down. There you go. What is the probability that I randomly select at least one child with this disorder? At least one. Does that sound familiar? That means one or more. Now I'm going to do this calculation two different ways because I showed it two different ways prior to you guys. Um, one method, well let's see, at least one means more than uh, one or more, right? So one or more is here. One or more. So that would be um, the probability of one plus the probability of two plus the probability of three plus the probability of four, plus all the way to the last one, right? I'm just going to straight up do it on my calculator. So what do I get? I got uh, 0 0.156 plus 0.313, right? Plus 0.313 plus 0.156 plus 0.031 equals 0 0.969, 0 0.969, 0 0.969, or 96.9%. .9%. That is a high probability. I would say that that's extremely likely. Does that make sense? Well, at least one means more no more. So it is likely for that to happen. I go in a group of five, at least one of them has that. I mean... I have to go and add all these probabilities together. Imagine if I had to calculate them and they weren't in front of me. That would be a pain in the butt. Wouldn't that? Is there an easier way to do that? Do you remember, if I have the probability of at least one, it is always one minus the probability of none. The complement, right? I'm going to use complements. The complement of one or more, and you could clearly see that now, is zero. So is it easier to go and add up this, 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 one, two, three, four, five different probabilities? Or is it easier to just determine one of them and subtract it from one, and I get the exact same thing than I would if I were to add up all those probabilities? Which one is easier? The second calculation is easier. Remember I told you, using complements. The concept of complements, you're going to see it a lot, especially, you know, it's starting to come up more and more. What's easier? It's easier to use the concept of complements. Now, I could use it in different ways. We saw it with the probability of at least one. I might ask other questions. Let me see what I got going on here. Let me add to that now. Using this table, let me move this down. What is the probability that I randomly select, which you know, at least two children with this disorder? What does at least two mean now? 
not extremely different from what we just did, but at least two means two or more, right? From two to five. Well, what's easier? Is it easier to go, well, let's add this and this and this and this? Or use the complement. So actually, let me write it both ways so you have it, right? At least two means two or three or four or five. Well, what is easier than doing all those? Now imagine, again, if you had to calculate each of these probabilities. They're in front of you. It's not that bad. But imagine if you had to calculate each of these. It is easier to say, I'm going to use the complement, add these two together, 0 0.031. Actually, let me write it out first. Um, the probability of 0 plus the probability of 1. It is easier to add those two together, 0 0.031 plus 0 0.156, and then take that value and subtract it from 1 rather than going and adding each of these, 1, 2, 3, 4. So if I had to calculate you know, these values, instead of calculating four of them, I'm only calculating two. Which one's easier? Calculating two of them. 0 0.031 plus 0 0.156, and then subtract that one from 1. What do you guys get? 0 0.813, 81.3%. Now I can ask a lot of different questions. Can you imagine? At least three, at least four, more than four, less than four. I mean, I can go in on this idea. And sometimes directly answering the question is easier, but sometimes the complement is easier for my calculation. It all depends on the question. Well, let me see. Here's another one. What is the probability that I randomly select? Let's look at this. At least, um, how about this? Less than two children with this disorder. My suggestion, when you guys have um, these type of questions, here's my suggestion, here's what you should do every time. Go straight directly to the question, right? So uh, less than two, what is less than two? I'm not including two. Less than two is one, uh, zero, let me not forget zero, zero or one. Um, so I have to add the probability of zero and I have to add the probability of one to do, you know, less than two. Well, <clears throat> that's only two different calculations if I had to calculate that. That's only this one and this one. Is it easier? Well, let's talk about the complement and then we'll talk about which one is easier. The complement of um, less than two, just looking at the table, this is nice because the table shows us directly. Less than two is one or zero, right? What's the complement of that? Two or more, right? The complement of that would be two, three, four, five. What I like to do when I have these type of questions is write out the general situation straight from what it says. Less than two is zero or one. If that's too many calculations, then I look at the complement and see if that's going to make my life easier. This complement is more calculations than the actual uh, situation, right? Which one is easier for me to use? It's easier for me to go straight to the probability of zero plus the probability of one. 0 0.031 plus 0 0.156. That one's easier to do for this particular situation. But when I said at least two children, two or more, if I went straight and directly to what that said, then I'd have to do four calculations versus just two calculations with the complement. So in this case, using the idea of complements was faster than going straight, you know, directly from what it says. Um, let me just ask one more question real quick just to see, kind of like, stick that in. Um, what is the probability... Why did it move? Let me 
sorry. This is the frustrating part of this thing. <laughs> okay. All right, what is the probability that I select less than four children with this disorder? Less than four. So again, anytime you're calculating these type of situations, I always say start with directly what it is asking for. Less than four means less than four, not including four. That means zero, one, two, or three. I would have to do one, two, three, four different calculations just to directly um, answer the question that I just asked. What's the complement of that? Less than four, right, is um, three and less. So the complement of less than four would be four or more. One minus P of four plus P of five. Don't forget that if you're using complements after you add them together, you have to subtract it from one. Okay? Don't just, you know, add them together and forget what you're doing. Remember if you're using the general, you know, directly from what the question asks, or if you're using the concept of complements. In this case, complements would be easier. One minus 0 0.156 plus 0 0.031. You know, this looks kind of normally distributed if you notice. You know, I see I'm writing a lot of the same numbers just because there's a nice symmetric kind of thing to this. Not every probability distribution is symmetric and beautiful like that. 